morning, brothers and sisters. This week we continue to study Romans 7, 21 to 25. The sermon is struggle against sin. Let's read scripture first. Romans 7, 21, 23. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind, and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that through the Apostles' writing in Romans 7, that we have a renewed uh, knowledge of who we really are under the illumination of the law. Help us to love your law and to know ourselves. We uh, worship you in your precious words. May we be reestablished again in your precious word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's review um, what we have uh, studied last week. Last week we have uh, touched upon the idea of uh, a contradiction of the good that I want, I don't do. But the evil I hate, I do it right away. So 15 and 17 and then 19 and 20 talks about the same idea. Because this idea is so important. So Apostle Paul repeat in 19 and 20. And in the center is the big idea of uh, the total depravity of man. That Apostle Paul said, in me dwells no good things that is in my flesh. So under the illumination of the holy law, Apostle Paul have a truly understand of who he self is really. So the central thought is, I know nothing dwells or house in me that is in my flesh. On the contrary, the law is spiritual. I am of flesh, so under sin. This is uh, in uh, 714. So last week we conclude, the one who truly knows the law also clearly knows himself or herself. He knows that he cannot fulfill the law by himself. He has no control of the outcome of sanctification. The laws reveal sin in him, and he is exceedingly sinful. And Apostle Paul is describing himself, and um, in the reading of the uh, scripture, it also applies to everyone. So the basics of uh, sancti sanctified life is to know that we are extremely sinful and need God's mercy. So at the end, uh, we urge that uh, we pray the psalmist's prayer. Search me, O God, and know my thought. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there be any hurtful way in me. And lead me in the everlasting way. So th the most simple uh, prayer is the prayer of a publican. He says, God, have mercy on me, such a sin. May the pray, may such a prayer becomes all of prayer. So now we move to uh, 721 and 23. Apostle Paul says, So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close to at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being. 
but I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. In verse 21, Apostle Paul discovered a principle. This law is a principle. What is the principle? It's the com conflict or contradiction that when he wants to do good, he found out the evil is right there, opposed to the willing of doing good. This discovery is, a, is not a presupposition, but it's a conclusion after a long period time of inner conflicts, inner struggles against the sin. Because the knowledge of the law that caused the past of Paul to have this inner struggle. So this principle is not a, a presupposition or it's not a hypothesis. It's a conclusion after a, a factual daily inner struggles. And this principle, the contradiction, the, the, the good and evil, is further expounded by verse 22 and 23. So, in Apostle Paul, inner man, inner being, he delights the law of God. This is his in, this is in his good part. But he also sees in his own members, this another principle, warring against the law of God. And this principle of conflict, or struggling, or opposing to each other, is also found previously in verse 15 to 17, in verses 20, 18 to 20. So what kind of principle is this? It's a principle of inner conflicts, inner struggle, inner contradiction. So we will see this inner struggle in uh, verse 23. 23 see, but I see in my members another law. 21. We see this general principle that the coexistence of the good and evil in him. And verse 23, he further specified this evil law, evil principle. So he said, I see in my memories another principle, waging war against the law of my mind. Apostle Paul. He likes to use the metaphor of war at war and making me captive. That still is the metaphor of war. Become captured to the law of sin that dwells in my members. So in verse 23, we see a spiritual warfare and a captivity of sin. You see, this law of sin is housed in his member and this law of sins is against the law of his mind and what's the law of his mind it's the law of god so after this uh, inner struggle then he cried out he said wretch the man that i am who will deliver me from this body of death. And the answer is, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. When the Apostle Paul said, wretch the man I am. Now the original Greek has two words. The first one is the undergo. Talawa. Talawa. It's undergo. And porous, kind of like a 
a pores a hole so he has many many pores in his body so this body has been beaten down and it describes a person with severe side effects so from great and ongoing strain this person has undergone significant hardships so it's kind of like a, a person in the war he has been uh, shot at uh, by machine guns with many bullets hitting on his body and there are many pores in his body but he's not dead yet he struggled against uh, staying alive so apostle paul in t verse 23 he talks about this inner warring of the two laws, the law of God and the law of sin. It happens to the same person. And after this inner struggle, he found himself to be severely wounded, but not dead yet. And so, the 24 is a, a rhetorical question. He said, wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? So rhetorical question is, the nature is demanding no answer. No answer needed. The definite the rhetorical question is the follow-up of thanks be to God through our Lord, Jesus Christ. And then we'll talk about this uh, body of death. It's a, the Jewish way of, of using uh, a group of nouns. But the meaning is really, uh, it's an H title. So body and death, they're all nouns. But together, it describes our mortality due to our sins. And the best way to describe this mortality is the, um, the song composed by Moses in his later life. In verse 1 and 2 in uh, Psalm 90, Apostle Paul praised the, the mighty God. He said, Lord, you have been our dwelling place. In all generation, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Apostle Paul begins with the the uh, Almighty, uh, the mighty created power of God and His eternity, and in verse three, he returned to the short period of time of man. You return men to dust and say, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flushes and is renewed. In, in the evening, it fades and wither. So it talks about the short, uh, shortness of our life. And seven, for we are brought to an end by your anger, by your wrath, we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your presence. It's talking about the, the, the anger of God and the wrath of God. Is represented the, the holiness of God and the fearful uh, attitude of man. For our days pass away under your rest. We bring your years to an end like a sun, like, like a sigh. The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. It talks about our mortality, our fleeting life. Who considers the power of your anger and your rest 
according to the fear of you. Moses continues to talk about the righteous anger of God and righteous wrath. And the result of that is the, the fearful attitude of God in using time in this short life. Verse 12, so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and bless and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have sinned evil. Our mortal life, short, full of affliction. So Moses prayed that God blessed his short life. And he concludes in the 16 and 17 about the work we are doing for the glory of God. Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. We are mortal. We are perished. Because of our sins and our life short this body of death and Moses pray that God will redeem us in this short period of life so Apostle Paul had this groaning that because of this inner struggle and conflict within him so he, he asked God to uh, rescue him from this body of death. Right. And then in verse 25, after the crying of the schizophrenia personality in 24, that he found out he's full of wounds, the spiritual wound inside of him. Now we have to understand, this is a, a mature Apostle Paul. He has reached out many people with the good news of Jesus Christ. And yet in his daily life, we have emphasized that from verse 14 to 25, in the Greek grammars, it's the present tense. Apostle Paul is, describes the present struggle with God after he has been regenerated by the blood of Jesus. So this is a, a reality of uh, entering the narrow door and walking in the narrow path in the discipleship of following Jesus Christ that in a sanctified life the true struggle is struggle against our own sin because of the holiness of God that God does not tolerate sin in our life. He is so holy, he doesn't even look at the sin. So Apostle Paul, after the crying of verse 24, he even said in 25, So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. Now this serve in the original Greeks, is to become a slave. Now, especially in the later part of this, with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. It almost um, have a, a direct head-on with the teaching in chapter 6, especially the uh, later part of the chapter 6, about uh, slave to righteousness. In describing our union with Christ, uh, Apostle Paul used the picture of slavery in 6, 15 to 23. He presents the slavery to sin and to obedience. He asked to choose. You want to become a slave to sin or you want to become a slave to uh, obedience? Because in verse 14 he said, Sin will have no dominion over us. 
because we are not under the law, but under the grace. So in this uh, slavery analogy, he said that you are a slavery. You are a slave to obedience. Then he said, you are a slave to the uh, righteous teaching. And then you are a slave to righteousness. Then you are a slave to God. He used this full board of obedience and the slavery picture to tell us that we are not under the law, but under the grace. So sin is not our, our master. But in 25 verse, in chapter 7, the later part, Apostle Paul said, But with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. It seems contradiction. It seems contradictory. But in reality, even though with the union of Christ, the sin is not our master. But because of the, the original sin and the total depraved uh, in our fall, that the temptation and the desire and the covetousness of, of our flesh always remain there. So this is a reality of a sanctified life in following Christ. In our mind, we delight the law of God because only the regenerated uh, 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 disciples, they would love to read God's word. They would love to worship. They would love the uh, spiritual uh, learning, and they would love to worship God. They would love to fellowship with the saints. They love the law of God. But inside of them, there's another law. It's a law of sin. Still have the opportunity and uh, the potential to use the flesh and to cap capture the uh, regenerate Christian. All right now, the 21 and 23rd verse in chapter 7 is today's uh, teaching, uh, talking about a principle of contradiction. And this contradiction is between the delighting of the law of God and the warring sin of law in the flesh. And previously, this has been uh, uh, laid out in verse 14 and 17. See, in verse 14, Apostle Paul said, the law is spiritual, and he's carnal, so under sin. And then, using 15 and 16 and 17, he described this carnality and uh, the bondage under the sin. He said, uh, what I like, I don't do. And what I hate, I do, in verse 15 and 16. And so in 17, he says, uh, if I do what I don't like to do, then it is not I who is doing it. It is a sin in me doing it. So you see this contradiction, this uh, a principle of uh, a struggling is already laid out. And because it's such an important concept, Apostle Paul reiterated in verse 18 and 19. 18 is the central thought of a total depravity. That a man or a woman truly knows himself or herself. There's nothing good dwells in my flesh. So this is the beginning of good news. That the true knowledge of ourself. In Israel, uh, worldviews, all knowledge of wisdom comes down to the knowing ourself in the sight of God. So in the sight of God, in the perfect law of God, we see that man has nothing good dwells in them. So 19 verse repeat the teaching in 15 and 16, the contradictions of do and don't do. And then Apostle Paul uh, make a, a small conclusion. It is not I who doing it. It is sin in me. And last week we talked about both 17 and, and 20, 
is not an excuse to, uh, to, to, to push away the responsibility that I'm the one who's seeing it. In fact, this is the uh, confession that recognizes that I am a sinner and I'm prone to sin. Right? And because of this uh, repetition of the teaching of the same principle in 14 to 17, in 18 to 20, and in 21 and 23, Apostle will conclude this principle of contradiction, of inner struggle, inner worry, inner attacking of ourselves, kind of like a, uh, people have an immune system attacking their own uh, immune system. The self-attacking, this is a contradiction. And that, that's the, the true picture of a sanctified life. That even though we are regenerated, even though we are born again, but because of the fall, that potential in sinning against the God's perfect law is always there. Right? So, chapter 7 is talking about man's relationships towards the law. And in facing law, what do we know about ourselves? So, Apostle Paul, in writing chapter 7, he used this uh, breakdown in 1 to 6, with one section, 7 to 12, to explain what's the function of the law, 13 to 14, before the law, we see our true self. 15, 17, talks about this uh, inner conflict, the struggling. 18, is describing the true man in front of the perfect law. 19 and 20 reiterate the inner struggle. And 21, 23 is the final finding of the a general principle of the law of God. Struggle against the law of sin. 24, 25 is the crying. Uh, uh, a man that struggles so much. In 25, he concludes. This is truly who we are. So I um, summarize this and I would uh, give this uh, slide in our uh, weekly uh, summary. So 1 to 6, it really says in uh, chap chapter 7, uh, 1, Apostle Paul says, I'm speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives. So basically, all men are under the law. Apostle teach that in chapter 5, verse 12. Sin came into the world, uh, and uh, death through sin. And sin spread to all men, and all sinned. So all die under the law. In order to redeem us from under the law, Christ died to the law through his own body. So 1 to 6, it, it, it shows us that we have to die to the law, the, the, the worship of the law. So the natural question is, so what's wrong with the law? So in 7 to 12, Apostle Paul explained what is the law. And he used four verses. In verse 8 to 11, he used this commandment to show us. Commandment is holy. And the problem is our sin. Sin produces more sin. Sin deceives us and sin kills us. But with the commandment we came, then we died. So in this teaching, in this section, Apostle Paul said, no, law is no problem. Law is holy, right, and good. And because of the um, this goodness of the law, Apostle Paul in 13 and 14, he asked, he said, did that which is good bring us death? And he said, no, no, no. It's not the law. It's the sin in us. So sin reveals what is sin. And it, it also reveals clearly that sin is extremely sinful. 
without law, we will not know that we are carnal. And so the, the, the conclusion is the law is spiritual and we are on the opposite side, opposite side of the law. We are carnal. Right? So, in order to explain this carnality of man and so under the sin, Apostle Paul described the inner struggle of this contradiction that why is he carnal? Why is he so under the sin? Because the good he wants to do, he don't do. The evil he has to do, he doing it. All right. And then we, we said um, 19 and 20 repeated the same struggle and same uh, contradiction. And in between is a central thought that the true human being is totally depraved. Nothing could dwell in him. Even though after the man is born again. So Apostle Paul is teaching us in our sanctified uh, journey. We still struggle. We still have this inner uh, principle of warring between good and evil in 21 and 23. And so 24 and 25, he showed that this inner struggle caused many wounds in us. And because of the desperation of the hopelessness in this struggle, that man will come to God. It's only through the desperation, only through the, the end of the road, that man will come to Christ. And so, in 25, he concludes, in his mind, he delights the law of God. Kind of like you and I. Once we are accept in Christ's salvation, the Spirit came into our heart and gave us a longing of the perfect Word of God. We love to read and meditate on the Word of God. But Apostle Paul said, but in my flesh, I become the slave of the law of sin. So even chapter 6, the later part, saying we are not under the law, but under the grace. And we are not a slave of sin, but we are a slave of the obedience. We are a slave of the, the, uh, the formal teaching of God. We are a slave of righteousness. We are a slave of God himself. But on the other hand, our relationship to the law shows us that we have that inner depravity, that in our flesh, that the law of sins has always the potential to arouse us, to stir up, to sin. And this is the reality. The reality of our relationship to the law to show us that with my flesh or in my flesh I have a tendency to become the slave of the law of sin and that's the, the spiritual journey the uh, spiritual life the spiritual warfare the reality is even though it delight the law of God but there's always a struggle against the sin in flesh. So in conclusion, Apostle Paul said, I myself still love God with my mind. A lot of my mind is also my heart. But with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. That's from the fall of Adam that passed down through the generation and generation to us. So this, the sanctification, the reality is that the regenerated man struggles with sin daily. And this is the fact of following Jesus Christ in the narrow path. We always have to fight against the sin. Now, the regenerated in the law, in the law how do I see myself? The true picture is I am carnal serve the law of sin 
So because of this reality, Apostle Paul said, thanks be to God that in Jesus Christ, our Lord, he delivered us. See, in the background of chapter 7, Apostle Paul hastened to bring out the power of the Holy Spirit, to bring out the redeeming power of Christ, because he wants us to face the God's perfect law. He wants us to face ourselves. What's the true picture of ourselves before the perfect law of God? The beginning of good news is on the bad news of who we really are in God's holy standard. Without that knowledge of the total depravity of our sinful uh, man, our flesh, the desire, the covetedness to the fall, we will never able to understand the perfect love of God in Jesus Christ. So the only response we can have to God is come to God with a mourning attitude, with a mourning broken spirit. Come to God and say, God, have mercy on me, such a sinner. We need God's help. We thank God to give us a true picture of who we are before the perfect law of God. We know we are sinners. We know we have to die to the law. We know the law is good. We know the law is spiritual. And we are sinners. We are, we, are, we are carnal. We know we don't do the good. We do the bad. We know nothing good to help in this. It's good. We know it's the sin in us. We know the law between the good and the evil. And we cry out to God. That God, only you can save me. And we also conclude that we concur, we agree, we consent with the law that in our flesh nothing is good. And in our flesh we have a tendency to become slave of God. As to become the slave of the law of sin. But in Christ, next few weeks in chapter 8, we will see how the Spirit of the law of spirit and life set us free from the law of sin and death. We thank God for this chapter 7 because throughout the church history, people have very uh, incorrect view of what the law is. We thank God through these few weeks that our church can learn together what is the true meaning of the law and what is the true picture of us before this holy law. We are sinful and extremely sinful. We are carnal. We so understand. But Christ loved us. Die on the cross. Die to the law for our sanctification. Die to the law so the Spirit can come to us. So we can serve and become slave of the Spirit. Let's pray. Father, we thank you such a great love. We thank you for such a privilege to study your law. We thank you that you have presented clearly before us what is law and how we cannot fulfill the law. But in Christ, all things are possible. We thank you and we look forward to the next few months about the work of the Holy Spirit in our walking with you into becoming more like Christ day by day. We pray this in Jesus' precious name.